How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the predictions for NXT Toronto and Survivor Series on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter and join in on the conversation by tweeting at No Holds Barred WP, as well as follow and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker itself. We're everywhere for your enjoyment and wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen to us. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I'm continued every week to be joined by my corporate co-host, the blissful boss, Corporate Cappy. It's a fun title since I am torn yes. for my blissful and my boss this Astro week. Fire Series, God. <laughs> and we are getting into our predictions for two shows that we are going to this weekend. I can't we'll believe be it's almost here. We're going to be there. I'm so hyped. We're going to do a vlog. I'm just so excited for this entire weekend. Yeah, this is the most relevant weekend we've ever had exactly as wrestling fans love it so we're gonna do a prediction show for you guys in both in the same podcast so our takeover toronto and survivor series at the same time so we'll start off with takeover toronto so interesting takeovers fire toronto's finally getting something they're getting a takeover well, event we should have had an nxt event two months ago yeah they scrapped all three events from toronto kingston and st oh, catharines sorry, not kingston kitchener and st catharines and then and they're the like, oh, we're going to give you takeover instead in Toronto. Well, we're, at the time, we were pissed off, but you know what? I'm actually happy. We're going to win I'm now. happy, but Ty Dillinger didn't get to come home yeah. to St. Catharines. So. Yeah. God. just It sucked, but whatever. We're going to still see him on Sunday. Yep. and Or Saturday, sorry. So we ended those predictions. And we'll start off with the finals of the Dusty Rhodes Classic. TM61 versus Authors of Pain. Um, Authors of Pain annoy me. I'm not a fan of Authors no. of Pain, man. They, they just seem like a generic, like three minute warning wannabe. Yeah, they just team. They look like two giant, oversized Roman Reigns. Samoan, they're Samoans. Samoans. It's just I don't know. It's not. It's not the whole dominant Samoan thing. It's already been done. Roman Reigns. It's almost like it's they, they didn't try making this this gimmick. It's just it's basically a two Roman Reign clones tagging to, with each other. It's like if they ever got up to the main roster, like they'd be irrelevant. Literally, they would fall down and be relevant really quick. So, uh, the but only- they're they're being shown as the dominant team here, and they basically dominated the entire playoff, getting or through the Dusty Rhodes Classic to get to the finals. And the only thing interesting about this match is the fact that William Regal banned Paul Ellering from ringside for this match. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, uh, TM sixty one is a and TM sixty one unreal tag team, uh, the Australian based tag team. My God, they're so good. Um, definitely an up and coming tag team and definitely going to be huge to whatever tag team division gets them when they finally get called up but they make it to the finals I see being a really decent match um, and uh, but I'm picking the winners to be TM61 and maybe that will solidify themselves as the dominant team and get a call up from that or maybe you know what I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Authors of Pain won just it looks like they want them to be that dominant team but hey as history has shown, being a dominant team in NXT is not always so good. AKA, AKA Ascension. And VOD villains. <laughs> so, who knows, but I'm picking TM61 to be the winners of this match. I am not picking TM61. I'm picking Authors of Pain. Just the way that these guys are being booked in NXT, they're being booked as the dominant tag team that's going to go over with Paul Ellering, banned from ringside to show that they can do it without him as well. Hmm. So I am picking Authors of Pain to win this. I'm not a fan of Authors of Pain at all. But, but you're I mean, gonna go with them. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting pick. I wouldn't. I'm not. I don't hate that pick because I think they could win too. They they almost look make like them that look team more dominant if they won this tag team classic yeah. thing, and mm-hmm. maybe they fight for the tag titles. Maybe eventually we'll see. Speaking of tag titles, let's talk about that match. The two out of three falls match for the tag titles. Tony Champa and Johnny Gargano. Johnny Wrestling himself. Team, do it yourself. I can't wait to chant Johnny Wrestling Tony or Psycho Killer. Johnny Wrestling Psycho Killer. My God, that chance can be awesome. Versus the Revival, the longest rating tag team champions NXT has ever seen. God, I don't remember the last time. I don't remember the time they guys won this to the title. That was a long time ago. Like just held, American Alpha. I have to look that up. Like God, that's been a long time. Um, there are two time champs. Too. Yeah, two time champs. Okay, I guess it wasn't that long and ago. These guys had probably the match of the night at NXT Brooklyn. Yeah, that's before Survivor uh, Series. So, so I think, but I think the Revival may get the call up soon. So that's why I'm picking winners and to be new tag team champions, Johnny Gargano, Tony Champa, and win two to one in this match. But 
I wouldn't be surprised if Revival won because I like picking the underdogs here, but the, the Revival has shown time and time again to beat out the underdog story and continue winning the Tag Team Championships, but we'll see what everybody wants with them. But I think they're going to get called up soon. That's just my so opinion. Too. They've I been in they, NXT for so long. Th- yeah, they're, they're going to need a team to elevate the Tag Team division soon. Like they need to cost their call up new people now, yeah. or else it's going to be the same tag team match over and over again. It's going to get stale. Exactly. So I, I think Team Do It Yourself is going to win as well. To yeah, it. DIY. Yeah. Um, just because of the match they had at Brooklyn, where they all they were so close to winning and didn't win the titles. I think this time they'll get it done because they're really over in NXT right now. Yeah. They're going to be over at the Toronto crowd. I guarantee it. We're going to get uh, those chances. We're going to get a lot of those It's going to be funny because Johnny Gargano, I actually seen him at like a literally a local wrestling event that probably had like 30 people at it at Jesus. Brock University last God. year. <laughs> and um, now he's in freaking NXT TakeOver Toronto battling for the tag team titles for NXT. Yeah, crazy. So, congrats to Johnny Gargano yeah, for making it that far. And we can man. say the same with this next match: Oscar versus Mickey James. We just saw at House of Hardcore this past summer, and Mickey would James. be like, okay, this is going to be it for her. Like, we're not going to see her do anything else. And Rhino, and Rhino, <laughs> and we all know how this plays out. But the original plans were for Trish Stratus to fight Oscar at this mm-hmm. event. You but know, how plans I didn't fall through because due to a baby with Trish Stratus having a kid. So, obviously, she can't wrestle. But we got the return of Mickey James, and she got a really good reaction when they f- showed the video at NXT. So, it's, I'm glad that she's still getting a reaction out of the fans. Asuka. Asuka's been dying for some competition. Yep. And this is the return of Mickey James since 2010. That was the last time she was in WWE. Um, so, six years ago. She still got it. As we know from House of Hardcore, she still has some good in-ring capabilities. Um, it should be a good match. I think uh, Mickey will be the face. Obviously, Asuka will be played as the heel. Even though both will probably get maybe the same reaction, I think Oscar. I think they're trying to transition transition Oscar to a heel. Yeah, uh, um, for Amber Moon. Uh, just because she doesn't really talk, you know yeah. what I mean. It's hard for her to be a face when she can't yeah. really speak English. So, but nothing set in stone yet for Mickey James as to what her future is in the WWE. Um, whether or not she this is a one off or not, or it's a one off, she becomes a trainer, or maybe she has another match after this. Maybe she gets called up and she has a match with someone else in the WWE. Who knows? Um, we'll see what happens. Nothing's set in stone yet, so we'll see what happens after this. Um, I think this is, they're going to make this match a really, really close match. Um, I don't think this is just going to be Asuka dominating and that's it. Um, but I am picking the winner to be Asuka. And maybe we see an appearance from Ember Moon to set up a feud with uh, Asuka after. I definitely think that'll be the next feud for Asuka mm-hmm. and because she is going to retain 100% in yeah, this match. That's going to be crazy, man. That's gonna like does she make Amber Mickey Moon James tap out? I think or does Mickey James maybe pass out? I think she probably passed out, but I think it, it, the match is gonna come close. There's gonna be a lot of near falls for Mickey James. Um, Amber Moon though, man, her finisher, the fucking top jumping off the rope and then the spinning stunner, like probably one of the craziest moves I've ever seen. Um, I saw it again last week on NXT. It was awesome. Um, so yeah, I think that's definitely what's gonna happen. Hundred percent. I agree. Can uh, we save? Can we save the the best for last? Okay. So we'll talk about <laughs> uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Samoa Joe for the NXT title. Should be match of the night, hopefully, or maybe not. Um, it is now a steel cage match, which should be interesting. Um, I know we're gonna have a good view of that because we're sitting up in the three hundred, so we'll actually get like a upper view of the cage while people sitting at ringside. I'll get the ob- obviously obstructed cage view, <laughs> which is not always a, a bad thing. But uh, crazy match should be steel cage. Um, I guess they want Nakamura and Joe to just. It's almost like the same as a, the one the problem is, is it's following the Finn Balor feud that Samoa Joe had on that match or that ended basically ended with the cage match. And then is this going to be Joe's new thing now? Is every yeah. match he's going to have is going to be in a steel cage? Yeah. So it should be the final showdown between these two. Yeah, um, because they've had they, how many times they faced once? Like and once Nakamura. Or yeah, Nakamura they, they have one the title, title match. Yeah, yeah, Nakamura one title. This is the official rematch. So Samoa Joe Nakamura two. Um, I do think Samoa Joe is getting called up as we said in the lowdown show. Uh, Samoa Joe is going to get called up. It'll probably be at the Royal Rumble. So I'm picking Shinsuke Nakamura to retain. And to be the face of NXT going on further until he gets his next competition, which we'll get into in the next match. But I think you pick Nakamura as well. Yes. Um, do you want anything to add to that before I have a thought here? 
not really. I'd see Nakamura being the face yeah. of it. I'm just excited to see Nakamura. Like, yeah. we're going to see him live. We're going to be able to sing his entrance live. Well, just... I want to know if he's going to have the, the guy come out and play the violin again. Oh, yeah. I think it's just going to be, oh, like, I'm so, I'm more excited for NXT than Survivor Series. And Survivor Series got really hyped this week. I'm just, I'm still more excited for NXT. Um, but, okay, this goes into my thought and uh, the obvious last match we're going to talk about with Ty Dillinger and Bob Rude. Here's a thought. I would not be surprised if they made Ty Dillinger and Bob Rude the main event. Really? In Canada, these guys are both Canadian. In Southern Ontario. They Bobby make this Roode. the main event. I think that would be the... I think Triple H, in the back of his head, going, fuck, if I made this the main event, it would be huge. I think that's the... Because the Some crowd is just going to be do. too over-pumped and tired after watching that match and then going into... This is the, this is what the problem was at NXT Brooklyn Year 1. That they got so into the women's match and were so overly hyped and and just tired of being hyped that the, the Finn Balor and... Uh, Kevin Owens was it? It's a Kevin Owens match. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah, it was Kevin Owens. Um, it just didn't. The crowd was already dead. And they were just tired. They're like they didn't weren't as into it. So if they were smart, the co-main event should be just Shinsuke Nakamura Samoa Joe. I mean, they, I think the crowd will get into that, but not as much as they would for Bobby Roode and Ty Dillinger in all Canadian matchup in Toronto, Canada, and all Southern Ontario matchup. Yeah. both it's in Toronto. Bobby Roode's from Mississauga. Ty Dillinger's from Niagara Falls, Ontario. Yeah. So, so uh, why not have that the main event? That'd be epic. And to have Triple H come out before or announce before that the winner of this is the number one contender and will challenge Nakamura. Like, will be the number one contender to his title. That would be insane. That would be crazy. So, but I can also, that... also see them opening the show with this match, oh, though. Oh, God, I hope not. I know it's a good way to pump up, but I think, no, I think they're going to open up with the two out of three false tag Like, match. in Canada, two Canadians going at it? Like, yeah. That would be money. Yeah. I think they're going to open up with Champa and Gargano versus the Revival. Because that, that'll be a good match. start-up yeah. match. Yeah. That'll get everyone into it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess, like, like I said, all Canadian matchup. I, this is, I expect this to be the hyped match of the night, the most hype is match we're ever going to see because just let alone because it's in Canada that's the only reason why Canada already has a nut crowd as it yeah. is and we had the rumored winner to be the number one contender which I think for sure should be the number one contender after this um, Ty Dillinger appeared on a radio station for Toronto and they asked him like if you win will this solidify you as the number one contender and Ty Dillinger kind of teased a bit that he's like oh maybe it should maybe it shouldn't you never know like he's kind of this like hinting like you know you never know what's going to happen I think it will I think whoever wins this match will be the number one contender. But my prediction aside, or I guess my prediction is Bobby Roode will get called up at the Royal Rumble uh, or sometime after that. And Ty Dillinger is going to win this match and get the the title shot he deserves. He probably won't beat Nakamura, but I think he'll get the title shot he deserves. And what a way to set up an unreal match between Ty Dillinger and Nakamura. We know Ty Dillinger can be the heel in that because we've seen him be the heel before he doesn't even he have plays to be a the great heel. Heel. he just can play the underdog face. Yeah, and Nakamura can just be like this established champion. Yeah. So, and I think Dillinger will go on the challenge for the NXT title. I am going the opposite route. I'm picking Bobby Roode for the win for this because mm-hmm. uh, I think Bobby Roode is the next up and comer for that for NXT. I think I, the, the only champion. problem I have with Bobby Roode winning and if he does feud with Nakamura is it, it, I guess it all depends on how long they plan on keeping him in there because we know Roode is older than than. Uh, Ty Dillinger here, and it's only a matter of time when Bob Roode calls it quits. And but you we'll, never know, we know how could, long he could go he on could, for. He could go. Yeah. It doesn't mean he's going to win the title from Nakamura, yeah. but he might get that title shot and then like and called up be a after. surprise entry. Because I'm going to assume they're going to have a takeover event before Royal Rumble, right? Yeah. So we could face Nakamura or for maybe the, after. I don't know. It's tough because it would be in December, so it'd be next month, and they haven't announced no. anything yet. Could be in January is the Royal Rumble. Oh yeah, it could be that month. Yeah, that's right. Because they have two months to hype. It's at the end of January, mm-hmm. so I'm thinking he'll get the title shot versus Nakamura. And then lose, but then the next night appear in the Royal Rumble, Rumble match. Okay, that's a good that's up. a good prediction. Yeah, so yeah, I agree with I'm that. I'm picking Bobby Roode, and I'm just excited to see both these guys' entrances. Yeah. How hype it's going to be for both of them. God, like the ten chance, the singing of Bobby Roode's theme song. Like this event is just oh god, I can't believe we're actually getting this event. And I'm happy that Triple H saw the money dollar signs with the two Canadians going yeah. at it in Canada. So that's why I mean, that's why I hope he sees that and goes, F- I have to make this the main event because if that's the main event, people would love that to be the main event. People would not have a problem with that being the main event. You know, you get the obvious goons. Oh, you're shunning the NXT title, man. You're not making it. Uh, you're not making it established, man. No, no. You listen. Look Understand at the event. The it's NXT Takeover Canada, Toronto. You have 
Bobby Roode, who's basically from Toronto, is being billed out of Toronto, and freaking Ty Dillinger, who's like not even 45 minutes away without traffic. So, you know, it would only make sense for them to be the main event. They can have Nakamura and Joe be the co-main event. It'd be, I'd be fine with that. I think people would be fine with that. Because... This match is going to be way more hype yeah. than the Nakamura and, and this is not WWE. Match. NXT gives the fans what they want. So I, I, that's why I have, again, 80%, 90% thinking of that's going to be the main event. I sure hope so, because that yeah. would just make the whole weekend for me, even before Survivor Series had started. Yep, that would be incredible. So, I'd lose my mind. <laughs> um, I, I think we're both looking forward to NXT more as like an overall card than we are Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. Um, so I expect it to be a really hype Saturday night in Toronto mm-hmm. at the Air Canada Center. Yep. So speaking of Air Canada Center, move into the second part of the show, and as our Survivor Series predictions, and we'll start off with the men's hashtag uh, men's <laughs> men's Survivor Series. I mean, what the official hashtag you can use? I guess uh, it's called Fantasy Warfare. <laughs> Anyways, so we got the men's. We have Team Raw consisting of Kevin Owens. Chris Jericho, Seth Rollins, Braun Strowman, and Roman Reigns facing the team of SmackDown of AJ Styles, uh, Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, and Shane, and Shane McMahon. McMahon. So interesting. And we have actually uh, polls. Yeah, I'm going to do from our boys at Fun WWE Poll. Check them out on Twitter. Uh, so I'm going to read off every poll that the Twitter fans think are going to win for the yeah. prediction for each match. So we'll go over that first. So for the men's, uh, they don't even call it the men's match. They said the main event. Okay, I guess. Which one of these teams will win the main event? They think it's going to be the main event. I think I wouldn't be surprised if Goldberg Lesnar was the main event. Just like Orton Lesnar at Survivor SummerSlam. That was awful. That was terrible. Anyways, Twitter poll says that Team SmackDown, 62%. Jesus. For Team SmackDown for the men's team. I'm going to disagree and say on uh, my pick, I'm picking Team Raw. And I think a lot of people are going to say Randy Orton, but I think AJ Styles is going to be the one to cost Team SmackDown. And I think that's going to set up a feud. Let, let, get me here. Is, the Undertaker said that they better win or else they got to deal with the, the Undertaker. So I think AJ Styles is going to be on the cost them and have to deal with the Undertaker and set up a match at the Royal Rumble for the World Heavyweight Championship with the Undertaker. That would be epic. Or... That means that's a long time now. Or at the SmackDown pay-per-view TLC coming up in December. Two weeks away. Two weeks away. <laughs> Way to go, WWE. Two weeks. Yeah, or it doesn't even have to be for the title. Oh, it has to be for the title. you got to have the title defended. Um, but I think that's good. That's just a small prediction aside, but I'm picking Team Raw. I am also picking Team Raw to win the men's match. It just seems like a typical WWE thing to do is have the, the yeah. men, the dominant men on Raw look better. Yep. I just, it's, it's Vince thinking. you got to think like Vince sometimes, as much uh-huh. as you hate it. Do we want to predict how, like, the survivors of each team or, like, who gets pinned? Uh, I didn't write that down, but if I'm going to think, it's going to come down to AJ Styles. Hmm. AJ Styles and, God, I don't know. It's tough. There's a lot of people from Raw that I could pick. I'd say AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. That's what I was going to say. But I wouldn't be shocked if it would, uh, I guess it has to be Rollins as a face, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm interested what they do with Braun Strowman in this match. What yeah. are they going to do with him? Is he going to be like the dominant guy that eliminates everybody? I get like this this weird like vision in my head of Orton and like Orton betraying Wyatt, but Wyatt betraying Team SmackDown by luring Braun Strowman from the match and them just disappearing, like just leaving. They both fuck over each other's teams. You know what I mean? Like maybe like Raynor doesn't fuck. Maybe just Raynor turns up Bray Wyatt, but doesn't cost anything. There's no pinfall. Then like you know that, and then all of a sudden Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt are gone. I think there's going to be something in this match to do with yeah. Strowman and Wyatt. I'm not sure what. Yeah. Um, I'm going with the obvious pick that Orton is going to be the one to cost the team, and then leading up to the the rumored match between him and Undertaker, which I mean, and I hope that before. just doesn't happen at WrestleMania. Yeah. Happen at TLC. Happen at the Royal Rumble. Whatever. Just don't. Put it at WrestleMania. Leave that for John Cena, please. If there's ever time I want spot. John Cena to be here and to wrestle someone, leave it for WrestleMania and okay. leave him wrestle. This is crazy table. that John Cena is not at Survivor Series, right? This or he wasn't on SmackDown one nine hundred this week. Not even as basic Thugonomics God gimmick. So yeah, uh, I'm picking Rollins to pin Styles for the win. Okay. So move on to the women's. 
And this oh, should be God. interesting. So my prediction, I think Charlotte is going to cost Team Raw here. And that's going to be because Dana, Dana Brooke is going to fuck over Charlotte to cost Team Raw. So it's going to come down to Charlotte to be the last person. Sorry about your girl. But it's going to be Charlotte versus Becky Lynch. Sorry. Again. Um, it's something you don't want. You, know, you want your Alexa to be the ending. But it's going to be the two champions facing off against each other at the end. And Dana Brooke's still going to be there as the mascot, but she's going to somehow screw Charlotte over again. And I think after this is going to officially end the parting ways with Charlotte and Dana Brooke. Like, finally, he, she's not my protege anymore. And I think SmackDown is going to get the win here. And I'm picking Becky Lynch to win and make Charlotte tap out to the Disarmor. Or, like, there's a, there's a weird pin because Dana Brooke, you know, does something stupid. But I'm picking Team SmackDown. That is interesting. And this is the match I'm looking forward to the whole weekend. This is going to be my favorite match for obvious reasons. Getting to see Charlotte. I mean, Charlotte. Fuck. Whoa! Bot City! Bot Listo over here. Technically, I could say Charlotte lose. Oh, okay. Okay, you, you, but, you saved yourself there. Yeah, I did. This is the first time for any of you that don't know, I finally get to see Sasha Banks live. I've been to like six fucking events. She's been called up. She hasn't been to any of them. So <laughs> that's just going to be marked out enough for me. Getting to see her and Alexa going at it. Like, I'm going to be so torn. But it's going to be amazing. I'm going to be making a sign that says, I love both of them. You'll, you'll, see, you'll <laughs> see the sign. I'll post the sign on Twitter. Yeah. But I'm thinking that, that that's a really good prediction. I think it should come down to the champions if mm-hmm. that was smart. And I have team, I'm going to say team SmackDown is going to win as yeah, well. Yeah, buddy. But I think the final survivor as much as I don't want to say it, is going to be fucking Nikki Bella. Oh, yeah, I see it too. I know what you're saying, but no, no. Uh, I hope not. And I, I'd be pretty pissed. I'm just going to mark out when I see Sasha and Alexa go out. I yeah. hope it happens before one of them gets eliminated. Um, I think Nia Jax is going to dominate. That's tough, man. It's a tough uh, ratio right there to see that. I think so- uh, Nia Jax is going to dominate, but I think maybe like two or three people are going to have to team up on her to beat yeah, knock, her to out. knock her out. She might yeah. be like the final two with Charlotte or somebody. Yeah, maybe. Um, but you know what? My bias pick, I'm saying Sasha over Alexa for the win. God. <laughs> and what a, for- <laughs> what a pick. And for that, that's and for my poor, poor Alexa, man. <laughs> you were she's a second. A, you, you, she's second to come into your life, so I understand. And for my, I don't know, corporate prediction, I guess I'll say Nikki Bella for Team, over Smack, team SmackDown, baby. Nikki Bella over Charlotte team with Luke. the same Dana Brooke, yeah. Um, yeah, turn. So we get into the tag team one. I think it's going to be really close. I have a feeling this is going to be a really, really close matchup. As much as they didn't hype it and didn't have any brand warfare, I think it'll be a really close matchup. Just, um, just looking at the teams, though, like Raw's team blows theirs out of the yeah. water. But I think it's, they're going to make it close. And I think Team SmackDown is actually going to win this one. I think and I think he, Slater and Rhino are going to be the ones to pick up the win. Because <laughs> they're mean, the most you, over you thing Rhino, right now. Because Slater doesn't win matches. Yeah, it's going to be Rhino. I think SmackDown has the better team inclusion right now. Yeah. But, and I think Raw has the They're better They're just more tag together. Teams. That's what I mean, inclusion. Yeah. But and Raw is not, does not have inclusion at all, mm-hmm. as we've seen. I mean, she's a, there's even, in, like, dissension in between teams. Yeah. Like, we got Cesaro and Sheamus don't like each other each to begin other, yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs> that don't like the other teams. <laughs> and we've got the Shining Stars, uh, whatever, uh, Enzo and Cass, New go. Day. And the club, we all know the New Day and club thing. Yeah. And the club already came out and said that they don't mind screwing somebody over. God, so, so I, that's why I'm picking SmackDown. Uh, I am going to pick Team Raw. Ooh, you think Raw is going to get the upper hand here, I think, right? uh, I think Raw is going to win just because you know how Vince McMahon likes to hype yeah. Raw as being the sh- So I think Raw is going to win 2-1 to one in the elimination matches. I think New Day gets the win. Ooh, interesting. Over... I'll, I'll, I'll go with my boys Brazongo. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> now, it's probably going to be American Alpha. Yeah. But or the Usos because they're heel. probably the Usos, not the hype bros. Yeah. Mojo, Mojo Rawley's probably but, <laughs> he's going to be so hype he's going to tire ascension. himself out before he gets in. He's going to get in before and yeah. just get eliminated. I think I'm going to be the only one standing up to cheer for the Ascension when they came out. I think I'm going to be the only one. They're not even up. in the match. Oh, they're not. No. I thought they were on Team SmackDown. Slater and Ryan. Oh yeah, Brazongo, no, they're on Team AA. Irrelevant. That's right. Yeah. It was yeah. the headbangers came out. What would you do to replace somebody? 
so I we, leave the arena. Do we have like a shocking prediction for one of these? Like, there's got to be like a shocking elimination first for some one of these matches. Like, I think mm. the someone like big has got to be like the first one. Like, remember um, AJ Styles for? Well, I mean, it goes aside of my prediction. AJ Styles could be a shocker. Uh, I think there's a like, Kevin Owens screwing Jericho or Jericho screwing Owens somewhere. Maybe Jericho falls on. I don't know. Something happens. Uh, the woman's mat, I think there'll be a shocker. I think Charlotte could get eliminated first. That goes against my prediction as well. I think Becky might get, might get eliminated, eliminated first, first for the Oof. women. That's a big shock. Because remember, la- oh, I can't the- see it though. I, I, I know it's a good prediction. I can't see it happening. It, well, it wouldn't. It wouldn't make sense with your prediction of Becky and Charlotte as the last yeah. two. But you know, remember the one year the the the, the authority versus the team WWE or whatever, yeah. and like Mark Henry got KO punched in the yeah. first two seconds of the match. <laughs> oh god, that was so bad. So, like, a shock factor. Like, there's got to be one shock factor that There'll happens for one of these matches. Maybe Roman Reigns gets eliminated first. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> oh, could you imagine if Seth Rollins got eliminated first? Yeah, wow. Jericho and Owens fuck him over. Yeah, that'd be um, insane. Yeah, there's nothing else I can really think of. I, I assume Sheamus and Cesaro are going to... Fuck each other over. Yeah. Like Sheamus is going to walk out or something. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I have Raw winning... Two to one. You have yeah, SmackDown nice. winning two to one. Interesting, interesting. We'll move on to the Intercontinental Championship in the missed match of the year <laughs> opportunity that everybody could have had, but they chose the Miz to win the IC title and have him go on to face Sami Zayn. Um, my prediction is I'm picking the Miz in this match, and I think Stephanie McMahon will get pissed at Sami Zayn for not bringing the IC title home. And this is going to eventually lead to a trade. And I think not only Zayn will be traded, but I think Cesaro will get split from Sheamus. And someone's going to have a Survivor Series with that. And C- Cesaro and Zayn are going to head over to SmackDown. Um, and it's going to involve the- Raw getting the IC title. I think Raw's going to have both IC and United States Championship. And I've read a lot of people go on Twitter that maybe SmackDown gets a new title. Maybe they reintroduce another title. Maybe it would be best for Raw if they're losing the Cruiserweight division. They, they just have three hours, yeah. so like you have to fill it with something. So maybe they gain. Maybe it's better if the IC title's over there too, because yeah, then you can and have maybe eventually the the United States one goes over later on down the line. But I think for right now, SmackDown just is too good for the IC title. Maybe they, I don't think they the really need it. So the yeah. cruiserweight division is going to be on SmackDown. Yeah, maybe it is best for Raw to get a, a another mid card title mm-hmm. so that they can fill up time. Yeah. And then maybe you never know the SmackDown could get a mid card title in eventually. But. but yeah, I see Zayn and Cesaro going over, so I'm picking Miz. Unfortunately, <laughs> I am unfortunately picking the Miz as well. And shoutouts to Dolph Ziggler for getting buried again. Yeah, again, the story continues of Dolph buried. God, man, hashtag Barry Ziggler. So I'm God. really hoping that this match between Sami Zayn and Dolph Ziggler does happen somewhere down the line at a big yeah. event because it deserves. That's what I mean. I hope spotlight. Zayn goes over to SmackDown, and I hope we get a match between Zayn and Ziggler because that's going to be match of the year. And I, I goes on to my my uh, also prediction of if Zayn goes over, um, maybe we see a triple threat for that. I or I guess yeah, it's only it only works if the, it didn't include the trade with Miz. If the Miz ends up staying on SmackDown, I think a triple threat for the IC title would be awesome. If not, maybe they have Zayn versus uh, Dolph Ziggler at TLC. Who knows? Yep. Um, and hey, if they did introduce a title, have him face for the new title. That'd be awesome. Um, so speaking of the Cruiserweights, as we just did in that match, we'll talk about the Cruiserweight match for the Cruiserweight title. Kalisto and Kendrick, we're both picking Kalisto, obviously, because we, we know the division's going over there. That's so it's the most obvious show. match of the night. Um, it still should be a good match. Kendrick's really good. Kalisto's even better, except for that boss you did this week. Um, Get that out of the way now. Yeah, so that the, the winner of this match gets the Cruiserweight division. We know it's going to be SmackDown with the announcement of 205 Live. This needs to happen, man. Yeah. Raw is just not... They, they've just ruined the Cruiserweights yeah. on Raw. Like, they have not used them to the best of their ability. No, no. And they've been wwe eyesed A lot. And I'm, I'm glad they're going to get their own show. I can't wait for 205 Live, man. I'm actually, like, really excited for that. Because they've watered like, down. Like, Tuesday night is going to be my favorite wrestling night. <laughs> God. It'll be after SmackDown for yeah. an hour. And they need more TV time, which Raw has the ability to do it, but they don't want to yeah. do it. That's so not They put Raw. in the extra hour on SmackDown. I don't know. I don't get it. So, but I assume this might be Brian Kendrick's last match. Mm-hmm. I Because he does run a wrestling school in yeah. the Orlando area. Yeah. So I, I think this was his last, like, hoorah for WWE. Mm-hmm. And maybe he'll he, they gave him the title, and now he's going to put over the new talent and go back down there. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll get into the 
probably the main event of Survivor Series. Hopefully not. Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. It was really tough for me to pick a winner in this one. Really, really tough. I thought about it, and I'm thinking about like the feud and the history of both these guys. I think this is going to be a really, really physical match. Um, we're obviously going to see some ring rust out of Goldberg. People should have come to expect it. Like we're not going to see. We're going to see a couple botches, guys. Let's Between be real these here. two guys, there's going to be yeah, some botches. Yeah, like let's be real here. Um, it's just this is just a nostalgia match. Like we're gonna Fantasy see, Gold- we're actually gonna see Goldberg wrestle. Like I, yeah. uh, b- back when he was there, I don't think I was able to be allowed to go to wrestling events. I wasn't either. So, so. like, it's gonna be but, awesome um, seeing the, Goldberg. The, ch- the child in me is gonna be excited to see yeah. Goldberg wrestle. But if I had to pick a winner here, and this is really tough for me to pick a winner, my reasoning for it. So I'm picking Goldberg, and I think he's going to be going up 2-0 in the match series. I don't think they're going to make him come back just to lose. I don't think they're going to make him come back to finally wrestle in front of his kid and wife just to lose to Brock Lesnar. As much as Brock Lesnar gets fed people, and he's always perceived as the most dominant superstar ever, I think he's going to lose this match. But it's going to be close. Like, Don't get me wrong. Like, Goldberg's going to get his ass kicked. He's but gonna Goldberg, get suplexed. Goldberg's going to win this match. They're both going to be sweating buckets. Yeah, like they they want uh, they're they're going to make. I wouldn't doubt if Gold, if Brock Lesnar won though, and that was the end. That was the last match of the card, just to piss off people in Toronto, and like there to be like always screws Canada Slam. over. Yeah. So, but I'm picking Goldberg, and I really hope it's Goldberg. I am not picking Goldberg. I'm picking Brock Lesnar to win this match. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time WWE brought someone back to lose in their one and only match, mm-hmm. Sting. Yeah, yeah. See, this is why I can agree with your pick too. Like, I'm not against and it. And Brock Lesnar has been the most dominant figure since he's come back in 2012, 2013, whenever it was. He, yep. he, he fucking broke the Undertaker streak for God's sakes. Yeah. So I think there's no way Le- Goldberg's winning this oh, match. It's so tough. I don't know if they're gonna make him lose in front of his kid. I think I don't think this will be Goldberg's one and only uh, match. I think no. he will lose this match. And then face and somebody. That's at a good prediction too. And, and then, then go into the Hall of Fame. I think finally, it, when he does win his match, that. All right, we're going to see him go to ringside and pick up his kid and put him on his shoulders, and he's yeah. going to invite his kid, his wife, and his... That'd be incredible. Imagine he, he retires as champion. <laughs> that'd be crazy. But I don't but think people want to see people that. Just, people are just going to be happy to see Goldberg wrestle again. Mm-hmm. It'll be a nostalgic match, even yeah. though it will not be the most yeah. Um, yeah. clean, physical... Well, it'll be physical. The most technical wrestling match. Yeah. But I see Brock Lesnar winning this match. Yeah. So... Like uh, we got every card there, and there's probably going to be some shitty pre-show matches. We're not going to talk about it. Yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> we got like it's it's going to be a four-hour pay-per-view, so there's going to be some some matches we probably didn't talk about yet. Um, Maybe Dolph Ziggler will get a match. <laughs> I don't know against who. <laughs> yep, Maybe something. they'll have him face Rusev or something. Oh God! <laughs> Where it may be, you know whatever, have some interpromotional matchup. It's Survivor Series. They'll probably the, have like a, this is the yeah. event to have it. Yeah, have like a backstage segment where a Raw guy's feuding with a SmackDown guy, and yeah. they make a match. Yeah, and something. Happens. But all right, that guys, those are our predictions. And again, four hours. Yeah, we are going to be there for both shows, and I'm going to do a vlog. So check out for the vlog after the weekend. I'm going to we, I'm going to combine both vlogs for like uh, both Saturday and the Sunday. Weekend. Yeah, the we're, we, we the might weekend. not have voices to do the lowdown show next week after yeah, this weekend. God, we're going to we'll be see. WWE'd out after this weekend. <laughs> and Ra is in Toronto on Monday. We're not going to that. But yeah, it's too much. It's too much. It just like. <laughs> Good for um, WWE finally realizing that there's money here in, in Toronto, Toronto. Getting three events. Yay, Toronto. The big four. So Yay. Wheeling. Maybe they'll maybe that will give them a, such a good weekend that they'll realize that we deserve a WrestleMania. Yeah, exactly. All right, and that guys, that's going to wrap it up for the predictions the podcast for NXT Toronto, not Brooklyn, and Survivor Series. On No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, we are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. Be sure to check out the Lowdown Show Brain Wars every week on the podcast where we discuss and review Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week, as well as the Sunday Night Heat every Sunday, which there won't be one this week because we have Survivor Series, where myself... Call Masters rants and discusses trending topics in the WWE. Remember, you can follow the podcast on Twitter. Join in the conversation by tweeting at No Holds Barred WP as well. As follow and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. We are everywhere for your listening enjoyment and anywhere that's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. As always, I'm your self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And I'm continued every week to be joined by my co-host. Mr. Corporate himself, the blissful boss, 
Corporate Cappy. Hopefully it's a perfect 10 pay-per-view. <laughs> and look out, look out for our 10 sign that we are going to make. Yes, look out for that indeed. And guys, see you next time.